Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 53 of the Unknown Comics Podcast. We're the people that host it. Still grateful for, as Darren would say, those 12 people that are out there watching or listening. There's way more than that There's watching way now. More. Okay. Well, listening. For those, Definitely listening. For those original 12, yeah. we love you. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> it's only going to stay mediocre from here. <laughs> All right, well, we well, hope... It's well, only going to stay mediocre until they actually start giving us crap to talk about. That's right. Yeah, so if you have things you want us to talk about, put it in the comments. Let us know. Yeah, absolutely. So, or uh, uh, or yeah. messages. If they quit, quit moving movies, we'd almost have Mor- uh, Morbius, like, next week. So. Mm, yeah. Yeah, which is now what, April? April 1st. Yeah. And they were like, no, it's not a joke. Well, it feels like one. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so, yeah. So here we go. Hope everybody had a good week. Um, if you're watching live, thank you for joining us. Um, post in the chat. If you're not watching us live, you're watching us on YouTube, comment, subscribe, like, follow, all the things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we have a Discord. Um, and uh, you can – the problem is, like, the Discord, I can't – unless you're, like, super boosted, you can't have a vanity link. There's no oh, hyperlink. Yeah. No, you you have to be a certain level of server. You can't just put the in, invite link. You can just you can put the invite link in, but it can't be like discordcom slash Oh, I got you. I got you. A vanity. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Vanity one. You have to be like level three boosted server to to have a vanity link. Yeah, we're not that cool. No, well, it just takes money to do that. <laughs> it's only money, right? Um. So yeah. So we'll. Uh, Somebody got some money. So yeah. All right. So this week. We got uh, another episode of Boba Fett. Yeah, we did. And uh, we we got to see a, a comic. Well, we, we saw a comic book character call back in episode two, but we got to really see him this week. Yeah. Chris Anton. Chris Anton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is hilarious. So, like, everybody I, calls him Newbacher, right? Yeah. And Kieran Gillen posted today. Yeah, I saw that. It's pretty that funny. He that looked, was his working he looked at He looked at one of his rough drafts of Darth Vader 1, and he's like, I totally called him Nubak. Yeah. <laughs> working draft. Well, nobody knew what it, how to pronounce his name either, right? You know, so, Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's not that hard. If you look at it, just look at him. Yeah, break I it think down. everybody wants to growl it or something. Well, it's a Star Wars name. They're all just like throwing Scrabble letters. Just yeah. take a guess. Especially Wookiee. Well, no. Wookiee names, they just take like a consonant or something and just make it three like of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just... Just add a couple. <laughs> it was cool to see a little bit more of him. I think, we'll, of course, we're not done, I don't, we're not I don't done think, seeing him. I don't think we're done seeing him. I think, I think he's building his army. But I, I like the fact to see that we're going to see him on Boba's side. I think that's cool. Yeah. We're going to see Boba ride a freaking Rancor. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I like that. He was, just, uh, you haven't seen it yet, right? No, I haven't no, seen it. It's fine. Freaking Tanner. It doesn't matter. We already talked about it in the truck. We already ruined the Rancor for him. So we're like, he gets a Raincor. But we already told him the, the best the most part of the whole show. The most important part is Danny this Trejo. was Dra- Danny Trejo's Star Wars debut. Yes. Well, you know why, right? Why he was in it? I don't. So. Robert, Robert Rodriguez directed it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But it was so, so great. Go. Like when the Huts get up there and they're like, we have a gift for you. And then I, you, you could, like Danny Trejo's there. You can see him, but he's kind of pretty far back. And you're like. Is that Danny Trejo? Like, I don't know. But oh, then you I see knew, it I later. Like, thing. you know for sure, right? But yeah. still, you're like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, no, I saw him. What, what I'm surprised is it was more than just a bit part. Like, yeah. I guess he's just part of the cast now. Yeah. That's awesome. pretty cool. I love the fact that he still doesn't have a name, though. He's just Rancor Trainer. Yeah. His, his <laughs> well, name like, is Machete. <laughs> well, and, and that's, that's the thing. is like, I saw Robert Rodriguez as an executive producer. So, apparently, he's part of the whole cadre now. He's yeah. going to end up with the dark saver because it kind of looks like I thought machete. he did. Some Mandalorian stuff. Did he? Yeah, I think he did some Mando okay, stuff. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think he was part of that original so bit of people. We got, so. a, we got a nice Texas director in there now. Yeah. So, which is awesome. Yeah, so you got, the, you got them, and then as Darren said, the Power Rangers showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I told Olivia Voltron. Okay. Yeah, was, they were, they were gonna They were going to form Voltron. Yeah. Um, so Cyberpunk. That was kind of my only gripe about this week. I hated what, the chase scene. That chase, it felt slow. Yes. It's, I'm mm-hmm. like, they're on speed bikes in a speed car that should and be going it, fast. It's like they're in golf well, carts. Yeah. They looked very, uh, I did see well, the little see that scene, scene. That scene. They look like Vespa scooters. Like Vespas, yeah. or they look like, um, they look like 50 Chevys as speeders. Yeah, I was about speeders. to say like old yeah. Cadillac Chevys. Yeah. 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 yeah, they could have done like the paint jobs, but made them more sleek looking. But yeah, they yeah. look like scooters. And they're supposed to be those badass 
biker gang. And it's yeah, like, and, I, just, and even like, as even as a biker gang on Tatooine, I felt like those kind of blinged out speeders were out of place. They should have felt they should have looked more Mad Maxy. Yeah, just well, like the, like motion. like the other yeah biker gang that we've yeah, seen. Right? Yeah, I guess that's a way to that's what they're trying. Tell they're just trying to differentiate them, yeah. right? But these are these are kids. They're not a hardcore like biker gang yeah. or whatever. So, and then they, of course this is really time of the first time we're really seeing a lot of like techno or whatever you want to call it cyborg cyborg yeah. yeah i mean we see him in the comics quite a bit but we really right. haven't seen him in the you, star you've wars you've seen one quite a bit his name is darth vader well <laughs> in this way though right. in this way yeah so yeah. yeah he's the he's the og yeah but i mean he's all suited up you don't see him like these guys are well and so. who was who was uh lando's friend in empire with lobot the, yeah. yeah yeah which you see you see one of those in rebels too yeah they're with the uh, little computation collar head thing yeah um he's got a he's got a computer for a braid he's basically the star wars version of servitors yeah pretty yeah. much or, or a mentat and dune yeah so so yeah uh so we have a chat me chris tanner darren and mike uh and they were talking about how it's just slow and i don't it is slow I'm but i'm still in the first I episode i didn't like so much yeah. we talked about that but the second one was good and I feel like the third one's been good so far. It's just it was slow. Yeah, I'm gonna trust the process. Well, and it's it's a western and a gangster movie at the same time. Yeah, those are both very slow genres. Yeah. Well, and 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 like it's been telling two parallel stories, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Um. So that that is gonna kind of chunk your pace down a little it, bit. It too. was. So it makes you wonder when you get to that scene where he shows up, and, and we see the big thing here, the big reveal. And this is the Pike Crime Syndicate is his villain in both of his timelines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and of course, also the big reveal last week is they actually showed, I guess, for the first time ever, the pikes were just fish. I guess they never showed that in comic <laughs> books. Uh, so like, a lot of people were talking about that last week. That they never actually. Well, shown and a technically, pike. technically, the pikes aren't his main enemy in the old timeline. He's trying to get protection money out of the pikes. So now he's yeah, got to go. The after, he's got to go after that biker. But gang. I, it, get, it looks like if it's probably going to be the Pikes that probably hired the bikers to go after those guys. Not possibly. You know what I mean? Because they attacked them. Yeah. Um, so um, only business. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting that the Pikes are the Pike Syndicate and all that kind of stuff. There's still a lot of people that I saw rumors that somehow Darth Maul was going to show back up, and I don't even know how that's. He's he's like dead dead. Yeah, I thought he was dead dead. So I don't know. He how died that's in Rebels. Happen. Yeah, like that. He last, also died last in episode season. one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he died in Clone Wars. I think it, he should have been dead in Clone Wars, too, um, at a certain point. He keeps it would not back. surprise me. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sometime during the Mandalorian thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he yes, he is he is a cockroach. But I think you don't kill him off in Rebels that way. Yeah. You know? Where he just kind of dies that way. No, it it does beg to differ. Maybe we will get some of those other uh, Crimson Rain or Crimson, Crimson Dawn, Dawn characters like in Kira. this. Did, yes, like I mean, what could, hap- what happened to Kira this many years later? Maybe we'll see her at some point or something like, related. Die in Obi Wan's arms and Rebels. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. He and and he kind of died peacefully after Obi Wan. Almost kinda. kind of a redemption. Kind of. He. I think. He's able to let go of the things. You know, because because Maul Maul's arc is he he eventually becomes embittered towards the Sith. Mm -hmm. And so he finally realizes that the redemption of the Jedi that that's gonna eliminate the Sith is, you know, on that planet and because that's why Maul was on Tatooine, because he Mm -hmm. had found out about Luke. Okay. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um no, I'm I'm enjoying it. I think it's uh, you know, they still haven't explained why he has to be in the back to tank so much. I mean, I guess it's Sarlacc related, but you would uh, you think would think it, you would think you just do your back to thing and you're done. Why he has first to... episode you could still see a little bit of scarring. So it's just And I think we're just seeing that still healing. Yeah. Um it's just a slow process yeah, as opposed to something that's like persistent. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and it also maybe that he feels like maybe it's helping him mentally. Yeah. You know, maybe he's he's got those dreams and he's kind of addicted to it now because they don't happen. <laughs> Maybe he's space cancer. He has starlight cancer. Maybe he's like, I'm going to stay in here until my hair comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stay in here until they can hire uh, Daniel, what's his name, that played young Boba Fett to be just yeah. adult Boba Fett again. <laughs> and he's even said he'd come back and do stuff. So I don't know. Maybe Daniel some... Logan. That's yeah. nice. Um, yeah, I don't know how they'd work him in. I don't either. You'd have to. You'd have to do like a prequel thing. Yeah. You'd have to go back to like Rebels era. Yeah, or he um, could show up in um, 
Obi Wan or something. Yeah. But see, then that's a conflict because I mean, that's the, not that f- the young uh, clone troopers look like a young Tamora Morrison, yeah. like a de aged Tamora Morrison. I guess you could just mm-hmm. technology that to de age him, huh? Yeah. Be like uh, Luke and the end of Mandalorian. Yeah, that was. The deep fake was better. <laughs> <laughs> like the stuff like uh, Corridor Crew does, like where they go back and they fix special effects. Yeah. Yeah. Like just using deep fake has, like, they, it fixed that one thing with Scorpion King. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, have you watched those videos? Scorpion King's forever uh, old, though. I haven't seen those, but I have seen other people, like, re-remaster the stuff. Yeah, using deepfake stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, uh, no, Boba Fett's, Boba Fett's good. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm excited to watch. How many episodes is it slated for? I, I'm not sure if it's six or eight. I would think most of the stuff's been eight, right? Mm-hmm. Eight chapters? Mando, Mando was both eight. Yeah, but a lot of the Marvel stuff has been six. Yeah, but I, I would think they'd probably stick with that same format they're doing yeah. on the Star Wars stuff and go with eight chapters. Especially if this is like, well, but Mando was like regularly twenty-five to thirty-minute episodes. These have, been, these have been hour episodes, so I would lean towards the six. Well, I guess we'll see. Yeah, it and also depends on how many seasons they plan on doing, or if this is just mm-hmm. a one-off thing. Yeah, because it may just tie. Because I've already heard that Mando season three may not be called Mandalorian season three. Mm-hmm. It may be something else that kind of ties everything together. So, you know, uh, who knows what yeah. what that's going to be? I, I I have heard rumors that as soon as this ends, the next week is Moon Knight. Well, I'd I'd, I'd love for Marvel to confirm that. I mean, it'd be I would love for them to confirm anything at this point. <laughs> right, yeah, because Miss Marvel apparently is second quarter now. I thought it was supposed to be first quarter, so probably not going to get Miss Marvel until after Doctor Strange. Well, we haven't got, even gotten any Miss Marvel footage. We've at no. least have footage for Moon Knight and She Hulk. Well, they they have they do have some little bit of stuff out there that they showed off during the Disney Plus Did day, they? but it's very, very little. Yeah. Um, it's not really enough to kind of know what exactly her powers are going to be or anything like that. It's just kind of her in a kind of Captain Marvel-esque, like, Halloween costume kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but nothing her more fang- than that. Her fangirling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, well, I guess we'll see. I mean, I'm, I, I like Boba Fett. I think he's awesome. I, I think it was cool to see how much he could take in a fight. Yeah. I mean, because they were... Chrysanthemum was just like he pile driving the crap out of him, and he just kept getting right back up. You know, yeah. having bones crack and everything like that. You know? <laughs> he was like covered in back to slime, just like a fish, just like sliding across, <laughs> slamming into stuff. Yeah, yeah, no. So that was pretty cool to see him going through that. Um, like I said, I think, well, I'm sure we'll see the Wookiee back again. So, and the Hutch just kind of the, the Hutch just kind of hightailing it out of there. Kind of felt weird to me. I don't I don't know if we'll be done with yeah, them either because it, it makes you you know it's never. There's it, something else going it's on. It's never there. lined out like a hierarchy of all the syndicates, right? You yeah. just yeah. assume the huts are at the top because, you know, they're they're multi they have multi planet syndicates, you know, they, they They've have been a planet. For a lot longer than anybody else. Yeah. Um so you just think that they are but maybe that's not the case. Maybe syndicates just kinda rise and fall in power. Maybe Jabba was what was kind of keeping them in that area. In in, in power, you know, kind yeah. of a thing. And him that void of him losing his syndicate, you know, and it and it begs to wonder What's on Tatooine that, that they want? That the, these syndicates want? Yeah, because it. Because I mean, they, they, the Huts called it a rock, a useless rock, but BS. Yeah, not if the not if the Pikes are putting that much interest in. Exactly, it. and and they were. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah, there's something. There's some. There's something I'm, in Tatooine that. I wonder if we'll see a part of the planet that isn't desert, maybe. More than that area that we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the so, first. This is the first time in the lore that you you kind of hear that Tatooine well, at one time was a water planet. Yeah. yeah. Well, in legends, it was it was a very fertile planet, and it got glassed. They, the native species, made another rival faction mad, and it got glassed, and that that species evolved, become the uh, one branch became the the Tuscans, one branch became the Jawas. Interesting. But that was legends. So. That that was that was yeah. legends. That, yeah. So. I mean, I mean, and, you know, I call, what did I call it? Dances with Banthas. Yeah. Um, you know, with with his, his him kind of embedding in with the Tuscan Raiders. Him riding that thing. <laughs> I was like, like I would have walked. <laughs> I just would have walked. It was going so slow. <laughs> I guess you could take a nap if you needed to. Yeah, and the like, Bantha would still just go. I mean, it's <laughs> on. I, it was like. I was like, what, have we watching Lord of the Rings now? I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> so if you fall asleep on the Bantha and it goes off course, by the time you wake up, you're fine. It's only moved like five feet in. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we at here? I just slept for an hour. And it's furry. 
Yeah, nice, get nice, warm and cozy. Yeah, it's got its 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 frock on or whatever. Um, yeah. So, uh, other news? Nothing. Nothing much. I don't remember much this week coming out. Um, I can't. Think, I can't think of anything I've really seen. Uh-uh. Yeah. I feel like there was. Uh, I guess Darren was saying today, Doctor Strange could possibly have. Um, a lot more people in it than we think. Really? Um, they were saying we may have Reed Richards from the first, first Fantastic Four movie. So, oh, okay, sorry. They did announce they've started casting Fantastic Four. They've oh. started the casting process. Sweet. So they're they're looking at Which potential. They probably should since uh, it's almost been confirmed that I guess uh, Tom Cruise is going to show up in Doctor Strange as a version of Iron Man. Blech. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, so all these like different, like almost like '90s castings versions of yeah. uh, you know everybody. Like they're saying a lot of these things are actually going to happen, uh, which is really funny. I, I think that's kind of yeah. I, I mean, even if it's only for like a split second, you know, somebody shows up like in a cloud cameo or something like that. Yeah. I, I think that now, that's what I said in the truck earlier. I was like, you know, you guys thought Spider Man was cool. Doctor Strange is like, hold my beer. You yeah, know? And I'm gonna I, give you cameos with all cameos. I think I only think you can you can do that far from home or no way home thing for so long before it's mm-hmm. just like okay, <laughs> we get it. You can you're gonna do weird crap all the time. Now. But we, with the multiverse of badness. If they don't have all these kind of weird cameos of different characters from other multiverses, then it, I mean, it kind of you need to. Yeah, it just kind of depends on where they're going to go with that kind of stuff. I'm just I'm just waiting for them to just kind of tie everything. I, and maybe that's Ant Man and Wasp is the movie that finally just like. I think that's going to bring kind of an unifies all the th- the yeah, stuff together. Either that or it kind of sets up Secret War. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, they're playing a. Which, I mean, I say that. I mean. It's been good. Yeah. They, they set up Infinity War. It was a slow burn, you know. But we knew it was going to. We, we knew, knew it was the goal was. Yeah. yeah. Like, the minute we saw the first stone, we were like, or the minute we saw Thanos. Yeah. For the first time, we're like, all right. We know where this is headed. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't have, I guess. I feel like Phase 4 has been that way the whole time. Like, it's very ambiguous as where Marvel as a whole is going. Yeah. Yeah. We know Kang is the big baddie, but how are we getting there? Yeah, I think. You well, know. I, the the way they've done it, because you know, we could always rely on some sort of in credit scene or something to further build the Thanos story in the first three phases. Yeah, we're we're not even getting regular all King we, yeah, teasers all, or anything, so he might not even be the end goal for this phase. All we know right now we're getting is some team of people we don't even know who they are going to be being built right now. The oh the the Dark the, Avengers West that's Coast all, that's all we're getting in credit yeah. secret Avengers right now. thing yeah. and then we got a trailer at the end of Spider Man which yeah. really wasn't even an in credit it was just it, it was, was a trailer, trailer. here's a trailer. a trailer yeah so yeah which is kind of crazy totally and then Hawkeye we got a musical yeah, that pissed credit. me off don't talk about that <laughs> <laughs> let me give you let me give you I all these episodes all. of awesomeness Dang. and then ruin it for ruin all of it in three minutes at the end <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to add that to the store playlist. You know who wasn't there? <laughs> Ant-Man. <laughs> he was, though. Yeah. He was, though. Yeah, he was alive as a person in jail. No, he was there in Endgame. He had to uh, go back to get the Tesseract. This is true. Yeah. In that timeline, but not in the, not in the, the main timeline. timeline. Because just because time doesn't work that way. <laughs> that, was Tell his, him, Brandon. that was his future. In a different timeline. So he didn't go back to the one that is in the main timeline. He went to a branch. And but then doesn't that branch become your new, and then you like, the past head. of that branch? Because no, because they, they, they went back through the quantum zone back into their branch. Yeah, they went back to the one they came from, their normal MCU. Okay. At least they hope so. We don't know where that's Loki what, went. That's what that, that was the whole dialogue with, with Hulk and, and them is that you can't, you can't go back to your past. Mm. You can only go. Basically, you go back to the past, and it spawns a new, a new future, a new future. And so then, what they're, what they did is they went and jumped back into theirs. So, but if you go, you can't go back to your own past, which spawns a new future. But could you go back? You could go back to your new future, possibly. Except for some of those guys went to the past. I mean, Captain America and Iron Man went to the past. 
But that wouldn't have been their past. That was somebody else's past. That that was that was it was their daddy's. It, past. So okay, hold on. It is their past, but the minute they go there, it, it starts. In it the, forks. Yeah. Right. So yes, it is their reality, their past. But then they 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 create a divergent. You know uh, what do they call it in Loki? Uh, uh no, nah, I'm blanking. You said that. I think they just call it a branch. Maybe. It's it's a well, yeah. unless it's one of those like huge issues. Right? Yeah, and then and then. They like I said the whole quantum thing. They just they just jump back into theirs mm-hmm. wherever they hopefully they program to jump back to right. Except for the fact that Captain America, Captain America, in that screws all that up. Yeah, <laughs> him, him being back in his timeline, old. Yeah. Yeah. So he forked right into himself. That or uh, he was forking. He doesn't spoon. I think he just creates a loop. I think there's two Steves that always exist now. Yeah. Because he came back. He, he was still, still in the, the ice. So ice. I, th- I think there's just a loop of two Steves. Maybe. Old Steve and so, Ice Steve. Um, ice some, Steve. Something hit me the other day. I see. So. Ice T. <laughs> ice T. The what if kind of created this whole nexus point thing, right? There's, there's, mm-hmm. there's certain constants that always have to happen. Um, so, using that verbiage, basically plugging it into one division where she is, she's labeled as a nexus being. Yep. She exists in every single. She timeline. she exists in every timeline simultaneously, right? She, there, are, she has no variant, right? Yep. Except for zombie. Except for zombie yeah. Wanda. Yeah. Like they've already like contradicted themselves. Yep. A little bit too. So. Well, so. I think that what that means is there is some sort of Wanda with powers in every timeline. Not not, not that there's not variants because uh, they they kind of explain this in Superior um, what Superior Four Devil's Reign number one, which came out this past week. Uh, Octavius is trying to get all of the Octavius variants to create his own superior team. <laughs> So, so is this like uh, Tom Cavanaugh's character in The Flash? Well, so he's he, Reverse Flash, and he's just like comes. He's trying to get all the Reverse Flash Tom Cavanaughs from all the kind of. <laughs> so, so the best team for me to work with is me. Yeah. Six one six Auto pulls yeah. in uh, the Superior Wolverine, the Superior Ghost Rider, and the Superior Hulk, and these are all essentially the same thing as Superior Spider Man's Auto and these other. Brains. Yeah. He's just brain swapped with these other guys. And their plan is to go to all these universes and absorb their autos. Uh, and so the one universe they go to, which this was had the potential of being a really cool character, and they went ahead and killed off in the issue, is they go to one where uh, Otto had a decent childhood and was not just abused. And that Otto became Spider-Man. And is like straight up. It's superior Spider-Man, but he's a straight up good guy. There's no evil in him. Huh. Uh, well, they absorb him. Well, they go to another reality and they find that there's not an Ottawa at all in this reality. So I think that's what the Nexus mm-hmm. is. Is there is a variant of Wanda in every reality, and maybe as it's, opposed it's, to it's not. more. She's more consistent. Like yeah, her being a zombie is like an external. The fact that she's there factor. Is yeah, yeah, that and that she. She's probably more similar from reality to reality because because they had he had a device that had a DNA tracer and they could they could yeah. pick up no trace of an auto Octavius in this one timeline. So I think that's that's the difference for Nexuses as far as people. Yeah. So then that so if there is a reality where there are mutants and she is one of them, then that means she's a mutant in all realities. Dun dun dun. It is zombie in one. Well, but she started normal. <laughs> she became a zombie. We think. We think. Who knows? We don't know where they're going. All right. Well, we're going to have a little bit. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about our discussion topic for tonight, which is uh, comics in 2022, uh, the arcs we've been reading, where we think they're going. Because um, uh, I've been reading Inferno and quite enjoyed it. And moving into the next generation of X. Uh, so we'll be talking about that after the break. All right. So so as I said before the break, so we, we all have kind of our arcs, which if you want more comic discussion, uh, Tanner and Chris every Wednesday uh, go live on Twitch for Tanner, sorry. comic chat. <laughs> I'm going to start just like going live and talking to myself. I'll like <laughs> run around the table. <laughs> Been busy. If I could be here, I'd be here. <laughs> 
We can, um, we'll phone you in next time. Well, I'm at work. We'll There's phone you in. They won't know. So, uh, so I uh, I finished Inferno this week, um, and I loved it. And I, of course, I've I've been a fan of Jonathan Jonathan Hickman's whole X arc, um, which is surprising because I was kind of down on him after Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. I just did not care for Secret Wars at all, uh, or anything that kind of led up to it. A lot of the the uh, convergence or whatever they were that kind of predicated all of the secret war stuff. Yep. Just didn't, just didn't hit me. Um, but it, it did for this. Um, he, he kind of put a button on his, his run pretty yep. good. Um, so, uh, so we are, we are talking spoilers in these arcs. Um, so if you have not read Inferno for yet, you need to, um, if you're an X fan, you had a day, you had a day. <laughs> I think you had a week. It came out last week. That's a long book. Four. I don't know that I could read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It did come out last week. I didn't yeah. read it last week. Yeah. Um, so, wow, well, yeah, because okay, yeah, it's been a long week. Um, so it uh, pretty much. I mean, the the trade paperback for that's going to look like a novel, <laughs> an omnibus. <laughs> and and here's the thing is is to really digest what Hickman's doing, you have to read those white pages. If you hate those white pages. Have somebody like Brandon tell you about it. Exactly, they, because <laughs> there there are nuggets of, of pertinent information, and a lot of it, a lot of stuff, especially when the when, powers when house. house and powers, you had to kind of digest those timelines because it wasn't going to do it in just the images. Yeah, yeah, like when it was talking about the lives of Moira and all that stuff, you yeah. you had to have that that uh, infograph to kind yeah. of keep it all straight. The full understanding to make the panels make sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, so so the the synopsis has been. Um, Pretty much, Mystique has done what she's done for Xavier and Magneto in hopes of getting Destiny resurrected. It, because she can't understand why they won't resurrect her. Yeah. Um, and and of course, if you read House and Powers, Destiny Destiny knew what Moira's like in a previous Moira life. Destiny knew. What she was. What Moira her, took her out on purpose because of that, right? No, Destiny Destiny kills Moira in that reality. That's what it was, yeah. They tor- they, they burn her to death first. Yeah. Um, they kind of torture her because in that life, Moira was trying to find a cure for the X gene. Mm-hmm. So she was an enemy of mutant. Even though she was a mutant, she was kind of yeah. trying to cure. It was a disease to her. But even Moira didn't know until a while. It took her a couple of times so, to start so over before what, she realized she was a That was her fifth life. Moira knew that she would resurrect when she died. At that point, she thought it was infinite. Yeah. Destiny tells, told her, no, you've only got so many before it's over. Okay, mm. so we've, we're have we out of House and Powers. You know, We're on her 10th life now, right? Um, and she doesn't know how many she's got left, so she's just assuming this is her last one. Um, so she's, she's going to help Xavier create – Moira's going to help Xavier create the mutant nation. Cool. Because she's tried every she's tried every other thing, yeah. right? She's sided with apocalypse. She every all, all these lives, mutants just get eradicated. Yeah. So fast forward um, to Inferno, and Mystique schemes and kind of does her thing, and th- ends up resurrecting Destiny mm-hmm. after all um, by doing Mystique things, right? And getting getting the lights, not the lights, <laughs> getting Mystique, getting the five to actually. Uh, bring bring destiny back. Okay. Um, now this destiny does not know what Moira is. Moira is. Yeah. Um, but all they know is for whatever reason, Xavier and Magneto did not want Moira to to be resurrected, or did not want Destiny to be resurrected. Well, because Destiny can see what she is. She, she, Moira's stipulation was no precog that can see the future needs to be resurrected because Moira is. She's hiding something even from Those Xavier. Because yeah. up until this point, you thought she just basically shared everything with Xavier. And that was that, and that kind of sparked the plan of Krakoa and all this stuff. Um, so they, they do some conniving and pretty much get destiny on the quiet council through, through kind of a vote. Um, and much to Magneto and, and Professor X's chagrin. Um, so they they go to tell Moira, and Moira's pissed off that they allowed it to happen, mm-hmm. um, and so she kind of she kind of runs off to go vent or whatever. And Orcus, which is kind of the big human 
sentinel organization that's kind of actively against the mutants is is starting to do stuff so that kind of takes xavier and magneto's focus and i think well they i think they think they kidnap moira dang i gotta go back and read it already um oh it was a novel <laughs> right <laughs> so so they, they basically go to orcas to try to find Moira, and only to find out that she's not orcas didn't take him you find out that orcas um which is like i said it's kind of this human machine kind of co-op that the machines don't give a crap about humans either well yeah like they are their own have you not seen terminator right you would think they'd see terminator (laughs) like you know but up until this point the sentinels have always been at the behest of Mm -hmm. mutants Mm -hmm. controlling or humans controlling them right um Except for what Mega was the what's the main big signal? Master Mold. Master Mold. I mean, they they kind of spur off and everything, yeah. and, and that's that's really what this is, and and like so like there's like this this army of Orcus infantry, human or whatever, and then Omega Sentinel and Nimrod are there, and uh, they're getting ready to fight Magneto and Xavier, and like Nimrod and Omega Sentinel just kill all the humans, just right in front of them, and just and and they end up killing Xavier and. Uh, Magneto. Yeah. Um, but they come for, back for whatever that's worth. Yeah. Um, so while that's happening, uh, Destiny and Mystique approach the White Queen. They've told White Queen everything they. No, sorry, sorry. Xavier and Magneto have told White Queen everything that's gone on. Okay. So White Queen now knows what Krakoa is, what they've done to get up to this point, as far as you know what the deal they struck with Sinister. And all that stuff leading up who Moira is. Because nobody knows Moira exists except Professor X and Magneto. Yeah, she's just kind of in the shadows. They, they just hide her, yeah. right? Um, so the White Queen knows. Um, and she's pissed off about mm. it. So now she's, like, there's just, you know, a lot of the lies and stuff going going about. Um, so, uh, so the White Queen's decided she's going to help Mystique and Destiny. She doesn't trust them either. So uh, apparently Forge had developed a gun that basically just depowers you. And basically and so Emma gives Mystique and Destiny this this gun. So Mystique and Destiny kidnap Moira and confront her. Um and basically what you find out is Moira's whole scheme was to get all the mutants together and figure out a way to depower them at once. She's still on the de- her, demutinization. Her, yeah, that 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 has never left her yeah. for whatever reason. Um, and so Destiny and Mystique are getting ready to just turn her. Off. Well, they depower her first because here's the thing: is the one thing you knew about her mutant ability of resurrection is she has to become a mutant first. It is a mutant power mm-hmm. that resurrects her. She doesn't have that, and she dies. Then she's not coming back. She's not coming back. No new reality. Mm-hmm. This is the last. This is the last reality, right? So does this gun depower you forever? It's not like a temporary thing. As far as we know. Okay. So, um, well, and and they didn't care because they were going to depower, her, kill then her. kill her, yeah. right? Um, so they depower, her, and then they go to kill her, and Cipher steps in, which yeah. apparently Cipher knows everything that's been happening because the island tells him. Okay. I want yeah, because he talks to the island all the time, but it's always written in Krakoan. Yeah. yeah, and so Krakoa has just been feeding. Like Krakoa knows what all's been yeah. going on. If the walls could talk, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so Cipher, <laughs> Cipher kind of has a little badass moment. He yeah. gets a little little cocksure, um, and basically kind of lines out. You know, if you kill her, then you're gonna die, and they're not gonna resurrect you. You're both dead. If you I'm trying to think, if you kill me. Oh, that's what it is. Um, they can't kill her. They depower her. They can't kill her because there's the Krakoan law. They can't kill a mutant. non-mutants. Yeah. Oh, non-mutants. So now she's a non-mutant. Now she's a non-mutant, yeah. so they can't. So they would be breaking the law. And so they'd lose all their, their power and footing. And if they, you know, so basically he's got them up against a wall. Yeah. Um, so they have to let her go. But, you know, pretty much Destiny and Mystique say, you need to run. Yeah. We're, we're going to find you because we just don't. Turned her into a squib. Yeah. And so so basically, so they all come back to the Quiet Council, um, and Emma has told everybody. 
yeah. in the quiet in the quiet council. Okay. So now, so that is, so you have you have the three seats, which is Xavier, Magneto, and Destiny. Okay. You have uh, Sinister, Exodus, and Mystique. Mm-hmm. Uh, Storm, Nightcrawler, and Colossus, because they bring Colossus in to take the the last open seat. Which was Scott's until he joined the X-Men? Yes. So they bring Colossus in, so they know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, oh, uh, White Queen, Black Queen, Red Queen. So Sebastian Shaw, Katie Pride, and, and Emma. All 12 of them know everything that's happened. Okay. Um, so, so basically, it's it's a dynamic shift now. The Quiet Council is very unstable at this point. Yeah, because nobody half trusts them. Are lying to everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Sinister's had all his own secret plans this whole time too. So right. Um, and now, come to find out that that the machines are actually going to start actively opposing humanity. Yeah. Not so just, now it's not this, just mutants. So now there's three sides to this this new war. So so this all transitions into the new book, which is. Uh, Immortal X Men. Immortal X Men, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and going forward with that, um, which Karen Gillan's taken that. Did they? I think right. Is that right? Maybe. I think yes. So throughout throughout Inferno, did they address for any of the resurrections? Do they still need Cerebro? And all they, that they, jazz. Yes, I mean, I think, it, I think the X and Life. It needs and a telepath. Might be well doing some so too because in Trials of Magneto, it established but Wanda made it to where basically they don't need that for mutants to resurrect. Um, it depends on where they, th- this kind of falls. Emma brings Xavier and Magneto back. So it takes any telepath can do it. Because at the last issue of Trial of Magneto, Wanda ba- basically makes a portal in wherever mutants go when they die. And if you want to be resurrected, you just your soul just walks through this por- portal and takes a clone body and you're resurrected. That's all there is to it. Huh. No, it doesn't talk about that at all. Uh, next week, X of Life's Death of Life's Wolverine starts. Yeah, which is kind of taking over most of the mutant story arc. Yeah, so so uh, so I'm I'm probably going to keep reading Immortal. I like that political part yeah. of it um, because, like in my gut, Krakoa just seems it's too good to be true. Yeah, and I think we're seeing you know there's a lot of buildup in the normal X Men characters with uh, Captain Krakoa, who's Cyclops, and yeah. all these different things. It's building up to there's being cracks. something. Mm-hmm. Being something pretty big that the rest of the Marvel Universe isn't going to be very happy well, with. Well, even Arako being on Mars, that doesn't seem like something that can last indefinitely. In the Well, and the humans aren't happy about that either. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm curious to see, because here's the thing, is is in, in Powers of Ten, we saw like what happens 100 years from now, 1,000 yeah. years from now, and, and they still lose. Yeah. So at this point we're, we're trying to figure out how they get there mm-hmm. and is there any way that they can change, change that yeah. um, you know once they find out about it because um, we still haven't seen any of Sinister's hybriding yeah. yet like we saw in Powers mm-hmm. um, and that was way in the future yeah that was like 100 years in the future yeah. um, but you would you would think you'd, you'd See start seeing that because yeah. is Hellion still running? Uh, Hellions is done Hellions is done. New yeah. Mutants is almost done. Yeah. Um, and Marauders is about to start over. Okay. That's um, part of Dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. So so we have we have X Men, Immortal, uh, Dynasty, or uh, Marauders. Marauders is not going to start again until a March. Okay. So the only current titles, X titles, right now are, are Wolverine and X Men, the X of Lives and Deaths of Lives Wolverine. Yeah. And X Men. And okay. then in March, um, Immortal X Men starts. Okay. So for the next few two months, this month and next month, that's just X Men and the X and Life's X okay. of Life's X of Life's X of Deaths. <laughs> you can just say you can say Lives and Deaths. So how's yeah, it, how's it going, Ace and Teller? We're talking about the direction of comics for 2022. Yeah. So we just kind of we kind of finished up uh, kind of the X, the Marvel X arcs. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Because that's pretty much all I'm reading right now. Yeah. So. Uh, Tanner and I are both reading a few things, but... Spider-Man and Devil's Reign are my two big, mm-hmm. my main things, uh, which we found out ASM's getting to number one soon. Yep, ASM1 to la- announced today. I'll have to see if they announce the creative team. They which, what's, it, what's its legacy number about? Uh, Almost to... We're like in the 880s. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting closer to 900. Wow. 
All I want is it's for them to when cause... they when they relaunch it with the number one, make the numbers line up again. I think that probably I would say we're probably going to get to nine hundred, and that'll probably be your issue one. No, nine hundred one needs to be issue one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, right now. So now it's one off. Cause, yeah, because so cause if, slot went to eight hundred one. If eighty five, I think was the last one came out, so that means it's Legacy eight hundred six or yeah. eight eighty six. Yeah, it's one off. I'm sure they'll correct that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why Slot had to. He he literally ended his story in 800, but then he had an extra book. That's so I, weird. I don't really understand why. <laughs> yeah, just tell so, off some kind of weird one-off tale. I mean, I know the 800 was already like 80, 90 pages, something like that. But I mean, like I, I, you I could have pre- fed it in there, right? I appreciate <laughs> the legacy numbering system. I understand why they like to reboot. Yeah. Right. It 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 says, hey, this is a jumping on point. Um. It just gets weird sometimes. Yeah, and I wish I, – I, I do wish with – I don't mind them doing it every now and then with certain books, especially the ones that come and go. Yeah. But with your mainstay characters, I wish they would just, just do the legacy number. Leave it like Detective Comics and Action Comics. Yeah. Just leave them alone. I mean, because you can market the book in in the previews catalog and in the title, the subtitle of the book. This is a jumping on point. Story arc starts here. It doesn't yeah. have to be or, with or the you, numbers. Yeah, you, you, just, you say the story arc number one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's ASM eight ninety two, but it's and in most cases, I mean, if you pick up a book and you get a few issues around that book, yeah. you're going to get a self contained story. Yeah. And in, in most cases, it's not going to I mean, be longer the, than the six general issues. is what six issues. Yeah. Because that's, that, a, that's a trade. Yeah. 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 The legacy number just makes it helpful for collectors. collectors. Yeah. yeah. Where do I put this? Oh, it goes here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you're reading. All the Spider-Man All stuff. All the Spider-Man stuff. And it's yeah. it's been good. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, Ben Riley's still Spider-Man. The yeah. main Spider-Man. Pete's in the hospital. With, He's getting better. Uh, his, something with his power. His powers is fighting him. It's himself. His spider sense. His spider sense is like on Sp- overload. Yep. So is he like in like a little coma world for like a side art? He's a he was for an issue or two. Yeah, he's he's had some moments where he's basically having to fight his own psyche. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, but he is, and he actually tried to. He actually got up, got out of bed, and went to try to fight somebody, and got his butt beat. So because his he tried to basically ignore his spider sense uh, and turn it off, and that didn't work. He needs it. Yeah. I for a minute I thought that it was going to lead into Savage Spider-Man his story. Yeah, uh, but, but apparently that's just non-stop Spider-Man rebranded, which is lame. Because if you look at all the branding for uh, the, the non-stop Spider-Man, the Savage Spider-Man logo is literally stamped over. Non-stop. Now I've only <laughs> the one book that I saw that was a variant cover. It's on all of their N- cover A. Dress. Cover A was its own logo. No. At least according to the art on that was on FOC. Yeah, when I updated, I updated a lot of the cover art, and they all had it that way. Oh, okay, because nonstop was like the the live streaming Spider Man, right? Um, it was just a different story. Just a different story arc. Okay, yeah, it was kind of its own self contained kind of yeah kind of story. Kind of like kind of it kind of killed itself because of it kept getting delayed so bad. Yeah, and I guess, and I guess maybe this is this was the point all along. I'm not really sure. I, I don't know. Read I quit reading it. Um, yeah, it wasn't well received. I know that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so Pete's trying to get better. Ben is still uh, working for Beyond Corporation. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got uh, a feeling that the CEO of Beyond Corporation is going to be the new Goblin Queen. Uh, yeah, Queen Goblin. Queen Goblin. Queen Goblin. Yeah, which we've seen her teased. Already, yeah, she's right? supposed mm-hmm. to be out in '88. Okay. Uh, we're hoping she comes out in '87 because that's what we have an exclusive for, and our '88 exclusive fell through. But we don't know her alter. Not yet. Like where she came we don't from, know who mm-hmm. she is, but you can tell that she's been, playing been doing with shady stuff. She's been playing with symbiotes, and she's been playing with some other superpowered stuff. Yeah. So it's they all... stole a bunch of of uh, Octavius's stuff when he was Parker Industries. Yeah, when they bought Parker Industries, they yeah. basically took a lot of information. Oh, okay, so they have a lot more than they say they do. So Otto has actually been investigating over the last couple issues. So mm-hmm. you, you he think, teamed up with. Uh, you think she's a distant Osborne? Or an illegitimate Osborne? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's a possibility, but I think it's more the fact just that she's gone through and taken a lot of stuff that was there, and they're going to use it in her own way. Yeah. Because she's been taking stuff from uh, several different villains, I think. Um, there was an issue where Ben fought Morbius and, like, tore his arm off. Tore, like, half his yeah. chest and his arm uh, off. And Beyond acquired that for samples. Mm-hmm. 
Um, of course, they've taken everything from him. His own Spider Man's blood. Yeah, he fights. Who else? And, he fought somebody else, and they took a bunch of stuff from him. Uh, well, they keep trying to take stuff, and some of the other people aren't giving it to him. Like the. Um, well, yeah. The what are the two girls' names? Um, you got um, Cindy uh, Knight. Yeah. And. Um, well. Dang it. I can't remember now, but they keep taking they keep they keep getting sent on these missions to go take this technology, but they turn it over to Monica yeah, Rambo. Misty Knight is one of them. Yeah, the other one. Okay. Yeah. They, they say, oh, it got destroyed in the fight, and they have actually just turned it over to to Monica Rambo. Yeah, we don't know what. So we don't know really what's going on it, right there. Either. Mm-hmm. That's Sounds all we know. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it's been kind of crazy, very secretive. You don't really. It's good. Yeah. Especially since they have so many different creators working on the Spider Man stuff right now, because. There's literally Spider-Man coming out every week. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether it be the main series or the Beyond issues. Uh, Black Cat and Mary Jane have teamed up and doing their mm-hmm. own side missions to try to see what's going on, find a way to heal Peter. I do uh, hope this leads into an ongoing Ben Riley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. don't see any reason why we can't have a, a Pete book and a Ben book. Yeah, we've had Miles show up and fight with fight with Ben yeah. against some some. Uh, is there is there well. Gwen in this reality, or she's kind of off in her own thing? No. Well, there is a ghost spider in this reality. She just hasn't Correct. been in this stuff. Yeah, because okay. yeah. she's she's regularly in Miles' book, I think. Yeah, there's still her and Miles are more thing in okay. this reality. Okay, but there but there is a six one six Gwen. Six one six Gwen is still dead. Okay, uh, this is this is Gwen from another reality that's come to six one six. That's just that's just here. Yeah. kind of yeah. like he is. Yeah, because because she's she's okay. Miles' age. She's not Pete's age. Okay, gotcha. Because Pete has Mary Jane, and it'd just be weird if they yeah. screwed with that. So the stuff, of course, we. This is already Felicia out there. Yeah, which yeah. Felicia's going to end up with Ben or something. No, he has his own thing. Mm. Which I, I he wonder. Has his own Mary Jane. I do wonder how long that's going to last because I'm starting to feel that she is in on the Beyond stuff something. to a degree. I mean, they got she was in prison and stuff like that before. Yeah, and he had he, they and got her out of prison for him. She's literally his own. She's Mary basically Jane, on house arrest though. She can't leave the, the yeah, penthouse. The, the penthouse. Wow. Who, who's running ASM right now? Uh, a lot of people. I think is, is Zed so Wells is the main Zed writer. Zed Wells, and then there's also uh, the the lady that was writing Captain Marvel for a while. She's been writing some it's of Kelly the, something. Yeah, Kelly Thompson. And then there's like two or three different artists. Oh, yeah. So, but it's not it's it's not like X where there's one big writer that's not just right now. I think it's because they're trying to put out so many so fast. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, they're and and I mean you'll see one issue from one issue from the next. I mean it's been different artists. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Doing yeah, yeah, interiors yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm fine. Like, I'm, I'm cool all, with that. As all, long as it's a cohesive. The story is correct. cohesive. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, like, you know, DC Comics, actually, and a lot of people don't realize that. Maybe they do. They're you flip it through one DC book, and you'll have different creators in a DC book, different artists. Yeah. Because um, DC, what they'll do is they'll be like, okay, Tony Daniels, Kirkham, this other guy. All right, these guys all have a similar style. So what we're going to do is just we're going to allocate so many pages of the book to each guy. So would you say that DC benefits from that as far as as far as release consistency? Maybe, but I I, I don't really know. I, I would think it's more just to get more guys involved that they probably had on contract at one point. Yeah, who knows? Um, uh, you know, I think it's also workload if they see that there's, you know, they want to pump out a few issues of something or it's an oversized book, they'll do that. They do a lot of oversized books, so I, I think yeah. that's part of it too. There's a lot of Batman books that come out there. A lot of epilogue stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, because, you know, books being delayed because the artist or the writers just aren't. Can't keep up. Can't yeah. keep up. That That's just super common. And yeah. so I figure, you know, if you can get a a bullpen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that that was the old Marvel thing, right? Yeah. And they still have bullpens, but most of your bullpens now are um, trade dress or. Right. Uh, little edits here and there. None of them are actually artists that are actually working on. Well, products. it's because they they've gone away from the bullpen spot. Like used to, you had to be able to match that style mm-hmm. because that way anyone could work on the book. Yeah. Right now they're trying that. Now both DC and Marvel have moved towards. You know, you read the book for the style of that artist. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. and like I said, they both still have bullpens. I've even seen DCs, but it's not. It's not. It's, like not, the old it's not your creators. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more your touch up guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's what the bullpens yeah. are now. So yeah, that, that makes sense. They're the guys doing the trade dress. They're the guys setting up the way the book looks inside of the book. You mm-hmm. know, making sure everything's where it's, it's more layouts than yeah. That's what your bullpen is now. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think it's gonna be exciting here. I'm excited to see where X goes uh, without without Hickman. Yep. Because I don't know who's taking over that overarching 
Yeah, I mean, I mean we know Jerry still has a good part of what's going on right now. Uh, of course, they've, they've already. But if, if Kieran Gillen's coming in as part of it too, then he's going to have a huge say in it. Cause yeah, he's... and I think him. I think Ben Percy still has. I mean, this entire X and Death of Wolverine is all him. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's cool to see where it's all going to go. Um, I think people are going to be non mutants are going to get mad at the mutants soon. Yeah, if if the story arc goes the way it looks like I, it's going to go, you know, and 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 the other part of it is we have not had just a ton of X to normal Marvel crossover. Mm-hmm. No, not right now. Not right They've kind of left it alone. Yeah, um, and let them, I mean, you for see, the most part, if you bring them in, they're like, okay, we're here for a couple seconds to help you out, but we yeah. really got our own thing. I mean, going. we saw them a little bit in the Hellfire Gala. We saw them a little bit at the beginning of the whole House and Bowers yeah. area, but it, it's just dabbling, right? Yeah. Well, like, hardly, like, the Phoenix Force comes back to the Marvel Universe, and the X Men are nowhere to be found. And right now, they're voting. They're doing a public vote again for the X Men yep. team, right? Yeah, I think that technically, I think this is this it's may almost be over, actual, right? This may be the actual last day for it. Yeah. Um, which okay, I'm not, I'm not cool. sure who's winning that, but no, I, I don't know who's in the running. Avalanche is in there. Um, let's see. There's quite a few people. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Hold on. Brandon's going to pull it up. Yep. We have the interwebs. X-Men vote. Wow, I can't type. It's probably like on Marvel's website, right? Yeah, it probably is, but I'm just going to Google it. X-Men vote. 2022. All right, here we go. Vote today. It is Armor, Avalanche, Bling, and come to find out, Bling, you do put an exclamation point at the end of it. Oh. It's Bling. Bling. Firestar, Gentle, Gorgon, Micromax, Penance, which is M. Penance and M are now. She just goes by Penance now. Um, Siren and Surge. So who's winning? Firestar? Uh, I don't know that they these votes... Um, Oh, they probably don't give you. They a, don't. They don't. A heads they, up. Don't, they don't tally until the end. Uh, the winner of American Idol is <laughs> right. Um, of these, I guess. I mean, when you, when you say them out loud like that, my brain says Firestar because that's the most recognizable one to me. Well, Siren. But that's Banshee's Siren, daughter. Yeah, Siren. Uh, Pen- Penance. She's been around for quite a while. Uh, that's Monet. Um, she just kind of has part of her. Well, okay, so Monet and Penance were two separate characters. Penance died, and she somehow absorbed so she can turn into Penance because they were like best buds when they were in Gen X or whatever. It's weird. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Avalanche, Yeah, I guess it would be cool to see an ex-Brotherhood come into the X-Men. It would be kind of ironic. Yeah. Um, I think these are rigged. I think they know who they're going with. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean <laughs> – I, you know, last year had Polaris, and I think we all I mean, they'd have to, was going to be out of They'd this. almost have to be because you can't be set and waiting to start writing a series for this. Well, I will say that it was a while. There was the, a few months before. There was a few months before we actually saw the book where Polaris com, comes in because mm-hmm. uh, she didn't come in until Jerry started writing it. Yeah, because I think it was going to be it was then, probably March last year, I think, when they were doing the vote. It was April I, or March. I, I, I thought it was this time last year that they did the I last I think we were already vote. in this building. We well, we were in no. this build. We started podcasting this building as like this time last year. No, well, maybe. No, we weren't in this building till uh, March. Yeah, but Jerry's book didn't come out. Well, no, until. the Cause the whole store wasn't. We didn't but, finish paperwork till February. No, I was in there. I was because I started. I only did like two weeks at the hop store full time. No, we didn't sign paperwork over here till February. Right, we we moved early. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they gave us a couple weeks early, but. We haven't technically been in this building for more than a year yet. Right. Yet. I don't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> There's a bunch of B-list X-Men getting voted in. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So who's getting voted out? That That's the other thing is, well, Cyclops is well, one. because he's Captain Krakoa. He's Captain Krakoa, so he's so not. that's probably what's up with that. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to say. Oh, we were talking about Captain Krakoa's uh Uniform. Oh, Knights of X. That's another one that's coming. Captain Kakoa's uniform looks like trash. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. It's like, I mean, if you're going to have a cool new uniform. Yeah. Well, I, I think, think it's all going to go to hell and they're going to figure out what's going on anyway. And he can fly, apparently. Yeah, and he, he doesn't have optic bus. He, he can use his eyes. Which, come to find out, it's like every time he gets a clone. Here's, okay. So wait, wait. <laughs> but, uh, hold on. 
So, but when he takes the uniform off, he's just Cyclops again with an optic blast on. I don't know. It's just like a projection. I think, I think Jean is doing it. I think she does all the Captain Krakoa stuff. Maybe. So here, here's been <laughs> here's been my whole rub with the resurrection thing, is the whole things? the whole reason he can't control his optic blast is because of an injury when he when he and his brother bailed out of the plane mm-hmm. when his parents died. It was it it was an injury, and. So if he has a new body that is fresh, he should be able to control his optic blast. Yeah. Maybe he can. Or or maybe he just never I mean, they, they could just wreck on him. Maybe he never could. Yeah. Maybe it was just coincidental. Maybe there's some some story arc somewhere that shows that off. I don't yeah. Know, maybe. So well, I mean, half in half the books, like they're like laser beams and they can cut stuff. Well, that's because yeah. the, the writers didn't realize what he had. Yeah, and then half, half the, book the books it's a concussive force. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you know, Superman's heat ray yeah, vision. Yep. Like, nobody knows what his optic blasts actually do. So, anywho, we have gone for a long time. Yep. This is a long cast. It's so, a lot longer than I thought it'd be. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to go and wrap it up. We'll be back next week. Um, so, uh, be sure to check us out uh, on Twitch if you're if you're watching this recorded. We do do this live every Thursday evening at 7. Um, we, uh, we also have a lot of other cool content on Twitch. Um, we have content on YouTube. If you're listening to this, um, you can catch this podcast, the video version, on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, if you want to listen to this in your car and you're watching it right now, uh, you can catch this podcast wherever you get podcasts. Yep. So um, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next week. Later. Bye-bye.